this weekend in movies! Corey's Rip Taylor impression is just ripping the room apart. He's <laughs> All right. All right, so here's the thing. We have four movies, Wade. We do. So we got to kind of uh, move, move it along. along. Move it along. So, Wade, uh, you'll talk about the first film, which, I is the, sure the, the, which is the big release of the week. It's the big release of the week. This is Source Code. This is the new film from director Duncan Jones, who was born Zowie Bowie. That's right, Duncan Jones, who is probably sick of people talking about him as David Bowie's son because he really is a great filmmaker in his own right. Uh, Duncan Jones' first film a couple of years ago was Moon, starring Sam Rockwell, which had elements of a lot of 2001 movies from the late 60s, 70s, 2001, Silent Running. It was very much an homage to those films, Kevin Spacey doing a Hal-like computer voice. But the movie really had its own personality. It wound up taking a very interesting direction, and it was one of the most intelligent science fiction films of the last decade, and it was made for pennies on the dollar. Yet, it realistically recreated the moon. Duncan Jones was in the running to direct the next Superman movie, but he was displaced by Zack Snyder. Mm -hmm. We all know how we feel about Zack Snyder oh, no. here. Take the paper but away from him. There. Get it away. But Duncan Jones got the better end of the deal here. He has now directed uh, what I think is likely to still be one of the best films of the year when the end of the year rolls around. Uh, a few years ago, Source Code probably would have been a big Tom Cruise summer movie made by a studio. As it is, it's an independent movie starring Jake Gyllenhaal, but it is an extremely intelligent, relatively complicated, but very accessible thriller with Jake Gyllenhaal as a soldier who is involved in a top-secret experiment that involves a kind of virtual recreation of events where he has to figure his way out of a very, very difficult terrorist situation. Here's a clip. What would you do if you knew you had less than eight minutes to live? I don't know. I'd make those seconds count. I would call my dad. I would hear his voice, and I would... I tell him I was sorry. Tell me everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Now that is the wonderful Michelle Monaghan, who I think is a very underrated actress. And it hasn't been getting great parts lately. She has a very good one here. She's the woman that he meets on the train and um, thinks he doesn't realize that he knows her, but yet he does know her. These are all these kind of virtual reality questions that he has to sort out as he relives this experience over and over and over in an effort to decipher what it is that he's supposed to find. Uh, I don't want to give too much more away. It's, it's a great mystery. It's a great thriller. Those two things don't usually go together, but I think Duncan Jones proves that he was not just a one-trick pony with a low-budget science fiction film. This guy is for real. Forget about being David Bowie's kid. Even if he were, you know, Joe the, the barber's kid, he would be an amazing director. He, he's got chops. I can't wait to see what he does next. I agree. I, uh, I think that this movie is it's fair, it's, it's efficient, it's fun, yeah. and it's smart. And the, the only knock I'll give it, yeah. and I, I liked it a lot, the only knock I'll give it is that you have... The Jake Gyllenhaal character is a character you're supposed to care about a little bit by the end. Yeah. However, I don't know that they really did enough work on the character so by the time that end comes, and supposedly you're supposed to feel for this person, you don't really, because the movie is really about the thriller True. mechanics of it. True, and, and I could say the same thing about what, you know, a lot of people have been comparing this, they've been saying it's like the Matrix meets the thing meets uh, Inception. It's got nothing to do with the Matrix or Inception. It's nothing at all like them. It's just those are people going for, I don't know, well, let's think of another science fiction movie that makes you think a little. I know, let's compare it to that. Not really. More than anything, it's probably like The Menagerie, the two-part Star Trek episode, right? It's got elements oh, of it. Oh, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it, not a lot, but enough to make you go, wow, that's interesting, and I like that. Um, also, I want to shout out to screenwriter Ben Ripley, who it's tough for me, because Ben Ripley's an SC guy, Bruin here. But, um, Species 3 was Ben Ripley's... You know what? Uh... Ben Ripley wrote two straight-to-video species movies. Right. Two straight-to-video species sequels, and uh, that's normally like Hack City. But uh, for him to emerge from that and deliver something like this, I think... Please, let, let your days in straight-to-video hell be over. Keep writing stuff like this. Lay it out there, because he's really talented. And also, I'd written down Don Burgess, who shot it. And, you know, yeah. what, what, it was, it's so well shot for a couple of reasons. First of all, he gives it a little bit of a Hitchcockian mm -hmm. feel, which I kind of liked. I thought it was kind of yeah. unique. And also, when you're shooting the same event over and over again, you've got to find different ways to make it interesting so you don't feel like you're seeing the same eight minutes over and over again. And he really does that. Does it's a, a good-looking film. Does a great job. A good that that film. would be Don Burgess, I think, who used to work with uh, Robert Zemeckis back when he actually photographed human beings. Aww. 
Because Don Bridges shot uh, Forrest Gump. Yep. And so uh, I think that Source Code is, I, I, I had a very good time in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's only like 93 minutes, but it's, it, tight. It, it's exactly it's, as long as it should be. It's tight, and it rocks, and it rolls. And, and Jeffrey Wright is terrific in it as sort of really a shadowy Vera, government Vera figure. Farmiga, Vera Farmiga as the face that Jake Gyllenhaal sees somewhere in a control room that has to direct his activities and sort it out. It's great. It's the, all great. The one thing that Jones does, which I, which I like in this, is that, is that he deals in a lot of close-ups. There's a lot of close-ups of uh, Vera Farmiga, who's, who's in a video screen a lot of the time. But There's yet, a lot of close-ups of uh, Jeffrey Wright, who's so terrific. But yet it's not closed in. It's no, not it's claustrophobic. Not, not at all. I mean, he knows, he knows, and, that, and this is always the thing. Look, directing, I'm going to say this, directing is about directing actors. First and foremost, forget about lenses and cameras and music and special effects, forget it. It's about actors. And what Duncan Jones does best is he gets the performances that he needs, and then he fills in everything else with production value, with art direction, with the music. Everything else flows into those spaces, and that's the way it should be. Once you've got those performances locked down, let everything else just kind of blossom. That's yeah, true. So d basically, don't worry about the fact that the story is preposterous yeah. and you're not expected to understand all of it. And I don't even know that they understand all of it. It's really just a launching off point yeah. to tell this story. So uh, for me, it's a, that's a, it's a buy for me. Uh, it's a buy for me. Wow. Look at that. I know. I think that might be our first uh, buy. It, that's your first buy-buy. Well, you know what this means? It means, the, it means the stinker season of January and February is finally over. Oh, wait for Arthur, everyone. Well, <laughs> Which we haven't seen yet. Sing it Monday. I'm singing Monday, too. All right. So, uh, all right, so that's a source code.